Raiding in MMOs is something not to be taken lightly. Gathering up a group of 40 players to take on a boss without a group finder, like you will in Ashes of Creation, is a massive amount of work that takes a lot of time and planning to nail down the perfect group for taking on those next foes. But making the group is only half the battle, as once you get in the raid, you will take on boss after boss and trash mob after trash mob, with each one being a unique fight compared to the one before. At least, that is what you hope for. MMO RPG have a variety of different boss fights for players to take on, some having you stand in a room just spamming spells, while others take you on a wild adventure, having you immersed in the fight trying to anticipate the next moves and how you will react to it. Unfortunately, with Ashes of Creation so far, all we have seen are basic raid boss mechanics, which have resulted in a lot of standing there and casting and not doing much else. Which is okay, because the only bosses that we've really seen were in Alpha 1, and there were only three class kits, and this testing phase was not meant to be a content test. Most of these bosses and their mechanics were considered placeholders, but players will have much higher expectations come Alpha 2, as this phase of testing is really meant to give us a good feeling on how exactly the game will play, and giving us a basic boss fight with minimal mechanics isn't going to be a good start for those hoping to jump into PvE content for Ashes. In the next few months, we know that we will be seeing Intrepid take on their first world boss in Alpha 2, being the Cyclops. This guy roams the Ayla Riverlands, towering over the players, as you can see with his scale, with different Cyclops wielding different weapons, from bows to staffs to swords and spears, which could potentially change up how each Cyclops is taken on. We also are about to see the area of Carfin, which is the first open world dungeon in Alpha 2 to be revealed for Ashes of Creation. This is a massive tower with multiple levels, including the outside of the tower, where you will more than likely take on multiple boss fights more centered around arcane magic, with the big bad being Loria Lamont. There are really two ways to go about raid bosses. You either make an engaging fight that people love and get hyped up to take on the next one that follows, or you make a boring mess that makes you want to quit the game. And most of us out there know what makes a raid boss awful. So what makes them good? Well, the first thing is making the boss more than just a hack and slash. Standing there, spamming, going through your rotation isn't that fun. It isn't engaging and it makes you want to quit. Whereas bosses that go through different phases, changing up how they fight, using different abilities or using mechanics to split up the party to take on different challenges at the same time will really help keep the players coming back for more. Raid bosses really need to be made to feel different from every other boss fight in the game, giving a unique dynamic dynamic and making every boss feel like its own person, doing things that take you away from the standard. For example, we had Gruul's Lair way back in Burning Crusade, requiring you to use a mage to take on one of the bosses, where usually that role is held for someone who isn't in a tank spec. Raids also tend to be more memorable when everybody in the party feels they have a purpose. Obviously, the tanks will be holding the aggro and the healers will be keeping everybody alive and the bards keeping everybody buffed up, but what about the rest of the party? Each class has its own unique style. Some have minions, mages deal heavy damage from a distance while fighters take the damage to the boss. So why shouldn't raids utilize the various styles each class has with unique fights where all aspects of the party are being used? Working together and syncing up their abilities is a must. Use ranged combat to take on mechanics that melee can't reach, give summons a purpose within a raid, and give the fighters engaging fights that require them to do more than just spam attacks and move out of the way of boss abilities jumping back in. But the biggest thing raid bosses need is to be challenging. Being able to crush a boss on a first attempt with a pug group is not fun. It does not tie you in. Although some people may want a quick experience so they can move on to the next scene, there is absolutely nothing fun about it in my opinion. Back before the internet was a big thing, we used to go out and buy guides at GameStop and do research on how to take on boss fights. You couldn't just charge in with no idea what you're doing. Fights need to require either a well-versed raid leader that can teach you the fights or a group that is filled with well-researched players ready to go down and take those bosses on. As Ashes of Creation is going with a more old school approach, you can expect that there will not be giant arrows on the ground telling you where a boss's ability is going to hit, and that is something you're going to have to pay attention to with how the boss is reacting. Fortunately, Intrepid already seems to be on the right track with difficulty as raid bosses in Ashes of Creation are supposed to evolve with the skill of the group. So if you take on that first boss, no issue, the second boss will all of a sudden see that and become stronger. 
giving you a real challenge to take on by the time you get to the end of the raid. But Intrepid really needs to show us this working. I don't think they've shown us anything yet that couldn't be taken down by a group half of the actual required size. Yes, there should be solo content, but group content should be challenging even for a full party, so it will be exciting to see these boss fights down the road when the game really starts to come together. What is important to you within a raid that you think Ashes of Creation should implement? Drop a comment down below, and if you're new to Ashes and have yet to create an account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can jump in on the forums, buy some cosmetics, or just hang out until you can finally step foot into the world of Vera. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.